Today I'm going to show you how to register a probe with the Testo Severis base. Use the arrow buttons on the base to access the menu Info System. Then press the Enter button to access the registration mode. The connection symbol in the base shows that the base is now ready to register the wireless probe. Now press the Connect button on the rear of the probe until the LED on the front of the probe flashes orange. Once the LED on the front of the probe flashes green, the probe is successfully registered. The status LED on the base also briefly lights up in green. In order to register more wireless participants, press Enter. In order to exit the registration mode, press the Escape button. Now start the Tesla Zavarius Commissioning Assistant. Leave the standard settings as they are. In this dialog, you see the probe you've just registered. Allocate a measurement zone to it. Here you can make more configurations to the measurement probe you've just registered. For example, by clicking on this space, you can alter the probe name. Here you can set the measurement rate. Here you can set the start time of the measurement. Click on Finish to close the commissioning assistant. Confirm the message with OK. The component is now successfully registered. In order to deregister a component, start the commissioning assistant. Switch to the tab Projects and click on the button Deregister Component. Now select the components you wish to deregister and confirm with OK. You confirm the following message with Yes. In order to create a one-off report, select the desired zone. Click on One-off Report. The report assistant starts. On the left hand side you can choose between predefined report contents. On the right you can define the report content yourself. Below you can set the report period. Select the location you want to save it to and click on Save. The one-off report has now been created. In order to create an automatic report, switch to the tab Automatic Reports. Click on New Report. You can give the report a name by right-clicking on Report and left-clicking on Rename. Confirm with Enter. Here you can select the measurement zone. Under Settings, you can carry out more configurations, for example showing or hiding individual channels. In this area, you can define the content of the report and, if required, add a logo and a signature line. Here you define the time cycle of the report. Here you can set the dispatch options. Once you've entered all the information, you click on Apply Settings. With a left click on Create Report, you can now create a temporary report. Today I'm going to show you how to set alarms for the Tesla Severis base. Click on Alarm Management and then on Alarm Settings Base. Under Device Alarm Severis Base, you can define the events for which the base issues an alarm. Under Alarm Conditions, you set the time delay after which acknowledged alarms are re-triggered. Under Alarm Output Severis Base, 
you define how the base notifies you in case of alarm. Under Advanced Settings, you adjust the latent delay for the wireless and Ethernet components. Once you've entered all the settings, you click on Apply Settings. Switch back to the menu Stationary Zones and the alarm settings are transferred to the base. Today I'm going to show you how to configure component alarms. To do this, click on Alarm Management and then on Alarm Settings Components. In order to add a new alarm group, right-click in the field, then on Insert into New Group. First name the alarm group. Under System Alarms, you can now define for which events an alarm should be given. For example, for a low battery level. Under Alarm Conditions, you set the time delay after which acknowledged alarms are re-triggered. Under Alarm Output Severis Base, you define how the base notifies you in case of alarm. Once you've entered all alarm settings, you click on Apply Settings. Switch back to the menu Stationary Zones and the alarm settings are transferred to the base. Today I'm going to show you how to configure alarms for temperature deviations. To do this, click on Alarm Management and then on Alarm Settings Channels. In the table in the middle, all measurement channels in the systems are listed. In order to add a new alarm, click with the right mouse key into an empty field under Alarm Group. Go to Insert into New Group and Alarm. Name your alarm group. For limit values, define upper and lower limit values. Under Device Alarms, you can now define for which events an alarm should be given. Under Alarm Conditions, you set the delay for upper and lower limit value violations as well as the delay after which confirmed alarms should be re-triggered. Under Alarm Output Severis Base, you define how alarms are made visible at the base. Once you've entered all alarm settings, you click on Apply Settings. Now switch back to Stationary Zones. The alarm settings are now transferred to the base. Today I'm going to show you how to create an alarm receiver. To do this, click on Alarm Management and then on Alarm Receiver. You create a new receiver by clicking on New Receiver. Give the receiver a different name by right-clicking on Name and then Rename. Now enter how the receiver is to be informed. By SMS with a number, and by email. In this area you can configure readiness times. These are the times in which the alarm receiver is informed by alarm. In order to alter a readiness time, right-click on the bar here for example, then delete. Now click with the right-hand button into the empty grey area. Click on New you can now set a new readiness time. Once you have set the readiness time, confirm with OK. You have now configured the new receiver. Click on Apply Settings and then back to Stationary Zones. The alarm settings are now transferred to the base. Today I'm going to show you how to define alarm rules. To do this, click on Alarm Management and then on Alarm Rules. To create a new alarm rule, click on the field New Rule. Here you can set the alarm group. In this field you can enter a free text which is displayed in the alarm notification. Here you set the receiver. 
you can set forwarding for unconfirmed alarms here. Here, enter the time after which an unconfirmed alarm should be forwarded. And here, set the receiver. Here you can set another forwarding, or alternatively click on Finish. The alarm rule has now been created and you see it in the table. In order to apply the alarm settings, go back to the menu Stationary Zones. The alarm settings are now transferred to the base. Today I'm going to show you how to create standardized acknowledgement comments. To do this, click on Alarm Management and then on Comments for Alarm Acknowledgement. To create a new comment, click on Add. Now enter the text of your comment. Confirm with Enter, then switch back into the menu Stationary Zones. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Severis software. Insert the Severis software CD. It automatically starts playing. Click on Run Shell Exec and the installation assistant starts. Select your language. Click on 1. Installation of the Severis software on a PC or server. Follow the instructions of the installation assistant. When the installation is finished, click on Finish. Next, install point 2. The Severis server including client software. During the installation you will be requested to restart the computer several times. In this case, always select No and restart the computer at the end of the installation. Now continue with 3, the installation of the mail server. Now continue with point 4. The installation is now finished. Now you can restart the computer. To do this, click on Finish. Today I'm going to show you how to deinstall the Severis software correctly. Click on Computer. Click on Uninstall Program in the bar at the top. Go to the Testo Severis entries in the list. Now deinstall all Testo Severis entries and make sure you deinstall the Testo Severis server entry last. Click on Uninstall and follow the instructions. Now go to the Microsoft SQL Server entries in the list. Deinstall the entries from bottom to top. You have now successfully completed the deinstallation of Severis. Download the firmware system update files from the Testo website. Open the Commissioning Assistant. Go to the tab Projects and click on the button System Update. Select the folder where you've unpacked the firmware system update files. Click on OK. The update files are now loaded into the base. Click on OK to end the commissioning assistant and restart the base. After the base restarts, its firmware is updated. The update of the other components takes a little time. In order to check the completion of the update, go to the tab System and click on a component. Here you can see the current firmware status. Download the software update files from the Testo website. To start the software update, you must first stop two Testo services. Now close all opened windows. 
Then open the folder with the installation files you previously unpacked. Now run both installation files In order to finish the software update, finish by restarting the computer. Connect the Ethernet components to the PC using a USB cable and programming adapter. Now start the Testo Severus Ethernet Assistant. Enter the IP address, net mask, and gateway of the components. Here, enter the IP address of the Severus base. Click on Finish. Confirm the message with OK. The component now runs down and briefly lights up green when the configuration was successful.